Hey, what is up guys? Jerry here, AKA Barnacles, coming at you with another Windows 10 video. It's been a while. We're gonna talk about why Windows 10 quality has been such a roller coaster ride. And I'm gonna give it to you from the perspective of an ex Microsoft employee. That is right, I worked there for 15 years. That right there is my original badge. This right here is my signed Vista Hero Award. I was actually a developer in the test discipline. You can see best in class automation and tools. And to give you an idea of the length of time, this is actually my Ship It Award. This contains all of the products that I shipped while I was with the company all the way up to Windows 8.1. So now that we've established who I am, let's go ahead and talk about some of the processes that have been lost by Microsoft over the years and what they've been replaced with and why we now have the quality of software that we do today. Also, if you'd like to buy one of my shirts, head on over to shop.barnard.com. This is by far the most famous shirt I've ever created. And yes, Microsoft's still watching. This is a nod to the privacy issues with the operating system, which I've made many other videos on, which I will link down in the video description. And as a matter of fact, I'm just getting ready to reinstall Houston PC right there. That's my Puget Systems build. I'm getting ready to install it with 1903 even though there's a ton of known issues with the upgrade to that operating system, installing in place on compatible hardware, you're not gonna hit as many of them. So th that's what we're hoping for. All right, well, let's start off and talk about how Windows used to be tested, okay? I'm talking about before the layoffs occurred, late 2014, early 2015. There was an entire test team at Microsoft dedicated to just testing the operating system. As a matter of fact, that team was broken down into many sub teams that each of them would represent a branch or a build lab. And then those would all come together in consensus in a daily meeting and through a lot of automated testing to determine whether or not they got to share the code upstream through the pond and eventually it would enter into this pool called WinMain, which was basically everybody's code smashed together from all the different uh, disciplines of the operating system, like UI, networking, inbox applications, drivers, display stuff, kernel, HAL, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now these meetings were critical because it allowed everybody to come to the table as human beings and discuss why they needed to hold back code from making it into the RTM bits, which would ultimately ship to the world. That's RTM stands for release to media. Basically they're burning CDs to sell to you at that point, or actually download now because who uses optical media. Actually, I'm gonna be installing from optical media when I do my next video. Make sure you subscribe, by the way, and ring that bell if you like this content. All right, well, these gates come together and everybody basically has a say in representing what bugs are found in the operating system. And these are bugs that are found on real hardware. We're talking about automated tests that are run in a lab that literally has like a thousand individual computers that represent all of the hardware diversity or as much of it as there is humanly possible with what is out there on the market. They had computers with AMD graphics cards, Nvidia graphics cards, integrated graphics, that AMD CPUs, Intel CPUs, even a lot of the little oddball stuff. And they even had a mobile lab where they tested on laptops and they still do to some extent today. But here's the problem, they laid off the entire Windows test team with a few minor exceptions and basically replaced it with the team that was testing Windows Phone. Yeah, the whole reason the layoffs occurred is because three different divisions at Microsoft that were like sub companies, Xbox, Windows Phone, and Windows, were all merged together under one house because they all had to play together. They got sick of having three basically independent pieces of software and they wanted them all to share the same architecture basically. Now, I personally thought that was a great idea and I think it's amazing that our Xbox One console now shares the same exact kernel that we have on our PCs. And if Windows Phone was still around today, it also would be running the Windows 10 kernel, which I believe it did before it- Kind of crapped the bed. Now, because Microsoft was testing on real hardware, they were able to find little transient issues that only occurred some of the time or with very specific hardware configurations. Now, unfortunately today, the majority of the testing is done through automation that is run on virtual machines. Well, the problem with virtual machines is they represent no diversity. They all act the same. They all have the same virtual hardware configuration. They all have the the same timing. They all have the same memory. Now, because of this, the only bugs that you're gonna find are the ones that are on the nose that hit about 100% of people. So how do you find those bugs that only happen to some people and not others? Well, that's where something called self-host came in. At Microsoft, a lot of the employees in the test division actually ran daily builds on their self-host box, which was their dev box, their main box that they used for daily work. That way, if they encountered a bug or a problem, they couldn't simply just ignore it because it would drive them absolutely bat crazy. So then they could file the bug and they could approach the developer and work with the developer to authorize a solution or at the very least an, a workaround. Now, unfortunately today, not nearly as many people at Microsoft are self-hosting and the developers themselves don't rely so much on having a tester per developer as they do relying on telemetry coming in from the wild, from Windows Insider builds. Now, Windows Insider builds are something you or I can sign up to get. It's basically early release code. And then we get that code, we run it on our box. And if something crashes or something breaks, 
it's gonna report that to Microsoft. The only problem is most of the bugs that occur aren't something crashing, but rather something not working properly. Now, when something doesn't work properly, it doesn't generate the information that needs to go to Microsoft in the form of a dump file, which they can load up and then go, oh, there's my crappy code that broke everything. But instead they rely on a user reporting that. And the truth is a lot of the Windows insiders don't report these issues unless they're catastrophic to them, which means only a small percentage of the people hitting the issue are actually reporting it. And even if they're reporting it, they can't necessarily give Microsoft what they need to reproduce it in a way that they can figure out where the bug is and how to fix it. But basically Microsoft has replaced flesh and blood humans that were creating these UI automated test cases and unit tests that were running daily against these builds and everything by and large by us, the consumers now testing this software and sending them the information from our computers. And that's where the telemetry comes in. Now, telemetry is great for tuning performance of software. And in some cases, it can actually help you fix bugs and progress something. But they're not going to allow you to fix bugs where the crash happens outside of the process that crashed. Case in point, let's say you have a piece of software and it blows up. But the reason it blew up was because of an external dependency having something wrong. So let's say a service on the computer. Now, when that process crashes, by default, unless you turn all that stuff off during install, it's going to take a dump file, which is a little memory snapshot. And I should say a mini dump, not a full dump. It's like a tiny turd. Not a big one. Basically, it's only sending them the very, very relevant information for exactly where that process broke and only inside of that process in its memory space. A full dump would be taking a memory snapshot of the entire computer so that they could cross-reference all of the dependencies between that process and its external processes on things in the operating system and figure out where the real problem occurred. Those full dumps rarely, if ever, get uploaded to Microsoft because they are absolutely huge. Now, this means when Microsoft has a mini dump, they have to try to effectively create the bug inside the walls of Microsoft and reproduce it. And that's where my team used to come in in 2015 is we would reproduce these bugs, set them up, hook them up with the developer and give the developer everything that they needed so that they could look at the full context or the full picture of what was going on and correct the issue. Now, unfortunately today, the Microsoft developers have to depend on basically telemetry. They basically have to look at a bug database and see where the majority of the crashes are happening and look at what little bit of information the computers send about those crashes to try to figure out what actually happened. And then when they fix the bug, they don't really have a good test bed internally to make sure it's 100% fixed. So there it goes into the insider builds, it gets pumped out to customers again. And then by and large, they judge whether it's fixed or not, whether it created new issues, which is again, hard to determine, right? How do you connect issue one with issue two, unless they are clearly connected or the issue just stops reporting after a number of insiders start updating the bill. Now, what used to happen when a major update came out for the operating system is they would push it out to everybody. But we saw that this was really, really bad about a year or two ago when they released an update that bricked like, I don't know, about a quarter of the world. Maybe that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but it was a lot of people and it caused a lot of stir in the press. So now they shifted gears and they do uh, basically rollouts in waves. This is why sometimes you open Windows Update and you'll notice you may not have 1903 available to update to, or your computer may even say that your hardware has been determined not to be ready for it just yet. And that's basically Microsoft's way of telling you that we are not quite sure if this is gonna run right on your hardware based on the telemetry that we got back from the insider build. Hmm. So now Microsoft has taken approach of basically once the insider builds look like they're doing okay and everything's fine. And keep in mind, these insiders do not represent the entire hardware diversity of the world. But to be fair, neither did Microsoft in their test lab, but they just have less of it now. So now if the insiders sign off on it, it looks good, they start rolling it out in waves to the public. The problem is the computers that are selected for that initial rollout, and this is why sometimes you'll see a Windows update before your friends or family do, is by maybe what kind of hardware you have, or it may just be a random distribution based on percentage, and then they see what telemetry comes back, what bugs come back, and then as they become more and more confident, they go to the next step and they roll it out to more and more people. The problem is that initial set of people that they select are basically dogfooding the software, and they might as well be Windows insiders themselves, because Microsoft doesn't have a high confidence in that software, otherwise they would just roll it out to everybody just like they did with updates before 2016. Now I do commend Microsoft for recognizing that there is a problem with their testing system and they are taking baby steps now in rolling out the software, but that doesn't change how many people message me on a daily basis and tell me that their box was screwed up or the networking stack is broken or they can't figure out how to map their drives properly anymore after an update or their hardware just straight up stopped working. These are issues that would have been found before. They would have been found by the test team that was at Microsoft that basically were the gatekeepers, and that's actually what they called us. 
And I really hope that somebody at Microsoft watches this video at a high level in Microsoft and suggests, you know what? Maybe this fat guy in the YouTube video is right. Maybe we should hire back the test team. Now, you're not gonna be able to get the exact same people I get that, and chances are I'm probably not gonna return, but you could get a team together that would train up and be just like it. You can bring the old UI automation back online, you can run more automated scenarios, you can run on more diverse hardware and stop trying to run millions and millions of test passes on virtual machines to find bugs that happen 100% of the time, and instead switch over to actually using kind of half and half with the real hardware. I think that that would greatly increase your ability to catch these bugs before they're going out to customers. And most importantly, if you guys are seeing a ton of crashes in the wild, I'm talking to Microsoft here, and you only have these mini dumps and your developers are unable to surmise from the mini dumps where the break is because of some external dependency or some spot in memory that wasn't dumped from the process entirely, I highly recommend that the next time a crash happens like that, you issue a dialog box to somebody out in the wild or maybe a couple of somebodies that hit this issue and say, listen, we can't find how to fix this bug. Would you please be willing to send us a full dump? This is gonna consume 64 gigabytes or 128 gigabytes or a terabyte of RAM. Uh, well, okay, maybe not, maybe not a full dump for one of those systems, but you know what I mean? You should have some method for the user to be able to proactively send a full dump to Microsoft. And then if you use that dump file to fix the bug, you should reward that user for their time basically lost in bandwidth and compensate them in some way for that. Because you don't have internal testers and you get what you pay for. And if you're not showing people that you're gonna reward them for reporting these bugs and uploading these critical full dumps, a lot of these bugs are gonna go unfixed and your developers are gonna do something that's even worse. And this is something that even happens sometimes when I was working for the company. And that is they're gonna guess what the problem is. They're gonna go change code that is completely unrelated to the actual bug because they don't understand it fully. Or they're gonna introduce a new bug or a new performance hit to the system. And that's the last thing we need. I figured it was high time that I made this video since I'm getting ready to install 1903, which is actually a pretty good build when you clean install it. And as long as you don't have a couple different uh, hardware chipsets on your networking and your motherboard that can cause some conflicts with it, which ironically I checked and I don't yet, Windows Update still tells me my computer's not ready for it, but I believe that's because of an active ongoing bug where it changes all your drive lettering for your USB devices, hence breaking a lot of stuff and it was pissing people off. It's not really a breaking issue, it's just very annoying. But by doing a clean install, I'm not gonna hit that problem. And my recommendation to you is if you wanna try 1903, feel free to do an upgrade, but make sure that you create a restore point. And also I would use a program called Clonezilla to create a complete backup of the hard drive because if you do any power user stuff like I do, you may in inherently break the Windows restore point. This has actually happened to me by say, uninstalling the Microsoft store using DISM from the command line. And then when you go to restore it, you're like, oh crap, I done broke something because it doesn't tell you when it's creating the restore point that it's broken. It tells you it's broken when you're trying to restore it. At least last time I tried it, that's what happened. This may be a bug that's fixed, but I wouldn't take any chances. Clonezilla is open source. It's going to image your entire higher hard drive. And if you guys don't know how to use it or you're not confident, I would be happy to make a video on how to use Clonezilla to back up everything before you proceed with a clean install. Now, I know it's not always fun to reinstall and set everything up from scratch, but I'll tell you right now with the new generation of Windows 10 and just how much churn is going into the code, because keep in mind, Windows 10 is a final build, meaning that Microsoft is gonna keep releasing major updates instead of what they used to do, which is release a couple service packs and then ultimately release a whole new generation of products. We're basically just gonna have perpetual Windows 10, just like Apple has perpetual OS 10. Kind of funny how they both stopped on 10, huh? So keep in mind that some of these major updates like 1903 might as well be a whole new operating system. So doing a clean install isn't such a bad idea. But if you don't have that option and you have to do an upgrade, it's always good to have a backup on hand just in case things go horribly wrong. And if you're using Clonezilla, it guarantees that you can actually restore the hard drive to its exact state before without relying on Microsoft technology. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you decide to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. I have tons of other content on technology, reviews, 3D printing, racing, simulation, anything nerdy. And I even have coding tutorials. They're a bit dated now. I need to do some updated ones called Codegasm. I would love for you guys to check out. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments or come over and follow me on Twitter. I am at Barnacles and I am incredibly interactive. Chances are if you tweet me, you might get a response unless this video goes viral. But I doubt that's gonna happen. Also, if you guys haven't seen my last video on how to get back your HEVC codec, your H265 codec in Windows 10 because it magically disappeared, 
for free, I did a video on that and it'll be linked down in the video description or I'll have an end card on the video that you can click on. But don't pay 99 cents to get back something that you already had when you originally installed Windows 10. Microsoft plucked it away and thought they could charge you 99 cents to get it back. But fortunately, there's a hidden link in the Microsoft store for device manufacturers so that their customers won't be pissed off to download it for free. And it works for all of us. And before I end this video and everybody's like, oh my God, this guy's just mad at Microsoft because he got fired in 2015. I'd like to clarify the reason I'm pissed off is because I've invested my entire adult life into Microsoft technologies and I expect excellence. I love C Sharp. I love DirectX. I love Windows 10 as an operating system and think that it's one of the most lean and mean operating systems that Microsoft has ever produced when you get rid of all the vaporware suggested app crap that they install without your permission and all the telemetry stuff that they're constantly building up and storing on your hard drive. I do believe that Windows 10 is the best operating system that Microsoft has ever produced with exception to Windows updates often breaking and needing to be pulled back. Their testing system being completely inadequate compared to what it used to be to find these issues early on and solve them before they affect customers very, very negatively and all the spying crap. Well, Microsoft doesn't call it spying, but I do. There's a fine line between collecting telemetry that helps you improve the operating system and trying to conceal that from the end user. However, I will concede that they've done a much better job of making it visible throughout the install process in newer builds. And I will demonstrate that in my next video where we reinstall the entire computer. All right, guys, thanks for listening to me ramble about Windows 10. I absolutely love Windows 10. Don't get me wrong. It's why it's running on the computer behind me, the computer down there, uh, half a dozen computers downstairs, three laptops and everything else that I have that can run it because I truly do love Windows 10. And ultimately, at the end of the day, I really want Microsoft to get their together so that they can start shipping high quality updates that don't get me so much mail from people saying, oh my God, it's so broken and seeing in the headlines after every major update that they've really horked up and screwed everybody over. I want to see Microsoft return to the trusted and respected company that they were when it comes to security, stability, performance, and just reputation. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one.